Hi guys, welcome back to World of Beard Reviews. Today we're going to talk about Deathstroke, issue 42, written by Christopher Priest and drawn by Carlo Pagulayan. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And this cover is awesome. I had to get the variant cover on this. But you know what's not awesome? This issue. Um, I don't say this very often, but I did not really care for, for this issue. Um... I have some major problems with it, and mostly, I, I don't know if it's mostly because it went a different direction than I thought, um, but I thought its cardinal sin was that, to me at least, when I was reading it, it was confusing, and I'll get into what, why here in a minute. So, it actually starts out pretty cool. We have this um, image and, you know, silhouette of a soldier, and he basically... It gives us a rundown, like a super quick Reader's Digest version of who uh, Deathstroke is, which is, I appreciate, um, I mean, I know who Deathstroke is, but if someone doesn't and they're only picking up this issue to uh, because they're reading Teen Titans and this is a crossover, that helps ground them in, in who this character is. Um, page two here, we get some more history of him. And then I did like this page as well. Um, Black Mask and the rest of the the uh, people in Robin's secret prison are kind of saying, you know, talking about Deathstroke and saying, hey, they're going to get us out here. De Black Mask is like, hey, Deathstroke's here. He's going to get us out, blah, 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 blah. Good stuff there. Um, and then we see Deathstroke, like, basically suspended with ropes so he can't get out. Um, uh, good stuff. And then he's got a TV in front of him where Robin has set up basically, like, a slideshow of all of his victims basically like like um like a version therapy right look at all the the evil you've done in this world you know interesting stuff um then we got um this conversation which i i appreciated this page too between um uh well, i'm sorry what's his name joseph jericho wilson um deathstroke's son and his partner terrence it says um Jericho is mute and Terrence is deaf, but they're both fluent in ASL. So in this page, we have um, uh, one of them, ta the um, Terrence talking, even though he's deaf, and then we have like uh, like thought bubbles, uh, which are really like sign language bubbles, which I really cool. That was really cool. I like that. Interesting. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen sign language in a comic book before. I like how they pulled that off. Um, and then we get. Deathstroke breaking out where he actually breaks his own arm uh, to get out, which I liked that. And then this is where it kind of starts to fall apart for me a little bit. And maybe this is because I didn't know who this character was. Um, he is, uh, he turns out to be Black Rock, uh, like a villain who kind of wears like an Iron Man type suit. He's there in the hospital. He's with a priest. He, um, uh, you know, prays for his mom and then he's leaving and that's when the Titans um, are, uh, they're going to capture him, essentially, is what we find out later. But we've got, like, the Titans are all in disguise. Dijin has used her magic to disguise them all, which was cool. But we've got all of these black, what would normally be thought bubbles, right? Or exposition bubbles from, uh, exposition boxes from the writer. Um... Turns out it was actually Deathstroke um, talking into Ro into their communicators into Robin's ear the entire time, and I didn't get that for at least two pages, and it really really confused me. And they're all like, it's it's laid out kind of funny, like all the the speech bubbles. Like I don't know, like I didn't know if it was Robin talking to himself. It, it took me a minute to figure out it was Deathstroke. And I don't know if that's me. And if, if that is just me and you guys really like this issue, um, good on you. Um, please don't let my, you know, my idiocy and my dumb dumbness when I was reading this, you know, play into your, your dislike of it. Um, so basically they um, uh, are trying to take this guy down. Kid Flash runs, grabs his backpack off, but it's got like a suicide rig on it. It blows up, and then he's trying to contain the explosion. Then the guy, uh, his suit activates, and there is a little bit of a fight, but he actually says um, he was going to turn himself in. He was at the hospital. He The priest talked about of killing himself and said, you know, just turn yourself in. You know, his mom's in the hospital, all this kind of stuff. Um, and, like, Deathstroke is basically, like, 
down talking and like trash talking the rest of the Titans to Robin, you know, saying like these are they're all their faults. This is why they're a bad team. That's why this person doesn't fit in any team. That's this person's uh, trauma, blah, 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 kind of needling and poking at everything. Um, I kind of liked that, but by this point in the comic, I, I had been confused and I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I don't like that when, when I read a comic. Um, so then Robin eventually gets back to, um, the, uh, the Teen Titans hideout and <laughs> Deathstroke is sitting in here in a, um, let me get that on camera, eating a sandwich in a recliner with a Batman shirt and bunny slippers. I, that it's in itself is funny. He's telling Robin, Hey, you guys are out of Mayo. When I, when I made my sandwich, you're out of Mayo. You know, if you're going to have guests over, you should have Mayo. Um, but he basically says, um, he, uh, maybe you let, uh, Black Rock let it die. Maybe not either way you flinched. And then Robin says, Deathstroke, you said you were going to fix me. You didn't say how. And Deathstroke says, simple, you're going to kill me. Um, I don't know what that's getting at. Um, man, I might have to just like read this comic again later just to, you know, now that I know what's going on, let it sit for a couple days. Uh, probably be two weeks before Teen, the next Teen Titans comes out, issue 29. Maybe I'll revisit this one before I read that one, and it'll make a little bit more sense. But on the surface, after my first read-through, my initial gut reaction was, this one was a confusing issue. And maybe it was just that one thing that confused me, and it threw me for a loop, and I don't know. Well, guys, what did you think about this one? Um, I think when I read back through it, I might like it a little bit more and get some more story out of it. Um, but like I said, initially, it was just kind of like, ugh, meh. Um... But guys, what did you think about it? Did you, well, you're confused as well. Did you kind of figure out what was happening before I did? Did you know right off the bat? And I'm just tired and shouldn't have read this comic tonight. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here at the channel, hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.